The first lesson is from Isaiah 60, 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people, but the Lord will rise upon you. And right and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall, shall come to your light, the kings and the righteous of your God. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come on you. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see, see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephraim. All those who shall Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Ephesians 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, that I call, I am, am a prisoner for Jesus Christ, the sake of your Gentiles. For surely you have already heard mission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by the revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which the mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have come fellow years to come to the same body and shares in the promise in Jesus Christ Jesus the gospel. Of this gospel, I become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am very least of the, all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring the Gentiles the news of the bondless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what the plan of the mystery did in for ages and God had created things so that the church was the wisdom of God in its which variety may now be known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Jesus Christ our Lord, whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence to the faith. The word of the Lord.
frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ. Amen. When was the last time that you looked at the stars? I mean, really took time to just look at the stars. Now, growing up in the cities, it's hard to see the stars most nights because they're drowned out by all of the lights. But out here in Dawson, on a clear night, you can see many, many, many stars. And I want you to think back to the last time that you looked at the stars. Maybe you were camping, maybe you were up at the cabin, maybe you were driving home one night, or maybe you actually went out one night just to look at the stars. Wherever it was, I want you to close your eyes and picture yourself there again, looking up into the sky and seeing those hundreds and thousands and millions of stars. Was there one in particular that stood out to you? Was there one that was brighter or bigger? Maybe it flashed in a certain way? Maybe you've seen a shooting star? Stars have captured the human imagination for thousands of years, way back to the first humans. And I wonder, what is it about stars that amaze us? Is it because they can seem so close and yet they're millions of light years away? Is it because we can name them, we can make constellations out of them, make pictures out of the stars? Is it because somehow the stars hold our destiny? Well, the Magi in our Gospel text today see a star, and this one is different from all the other stars. There is something about this star that catches their attention. And it's a star that was different from anything that they had ever seen before. And this is what they did. They watched the stars. That's what they did. They looked at the stars for signs and meaning. So it's pretty incredible that this one star stands out. The Magi came to the east. And this means that they probably were not Jewish. And they were known as wise men, or magicians, or astrologers. And yet, despite not being Jewish, they follow this amazing star to Bethlehem to look for the king of the Jews. What kind of star is this that these magi would travel a great distance to see a little Jewish baby. And not only have the Magi come from the East to see this little Jewish baby, but they've come bringing gifts for the baby. They brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now I can't help but wonder what in the world baby Jesus would use gold, frankincense, and myrrh for. There are odd gifts for a baby shower. I'm sure Mary and Joseph probably would have appreciated some diapers, maybe some clothes. I know maybe Jesus probably couldn't talk, but he probably would have preferred a cradle instead of the manger of hay that he was laying in. And yet, these wise men, maybe that's the problem, the wise men, some would say that's an oxymoron, but... We'll leave that at the, we'll leave that there. These wise men, they bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These gifts are really expensive. These are things that the wealthy would have. 
and they're given to a baby lying in a manger. And over the past few weeks, there have been many gifts that have been purchased and given and received. And some of these gifts were on someone's wish list, on their Christmas list. And some of these gifts given during the Christmas season maybe were not on someone's list. But somebody put a lot of thought into finding or creating a special gift. And I think that these gifts are maybe a little bit more meaningful than the ones that you put on your Christmas list. These gifts that come from the heart, that have a lot of thought put into them, are the ones that touch us most. And I wonder, why is that? Well, growing up, I received many life lessons from many people, but there are three sources that I'll lift up in particular. My parents, my teachers and pastors, and Tim Taylor's next door neighbor, Wilson, from the TV show Home Improvement. <laughs> Wilson, as you know, was always quick with a hidey ho neighbor. It was known for giving Tim and his family advice, mostly Tim. And oftentimes, in fact most times, Tim doesn't understand it, and he misuses it completely, but somehow it always works out in the end. And in one particular episode, Wilson tells Tim a story about gifts. He says there once was a little boy in Africa who wanted to give his teacher a gift, but he had no money. So he walked two days to the ocean, and he picked up a handful of sand, and he walked two days back, and he gave it to her. She was greatly moved by this gift, but she said, it was so far for you to walk. And the boy said, teacher, the journey was part of the gift. The journey is part of the gift. And see, the wise men bring baby Jesus gifts that are fit for a king. But it's the star that has provided the gift for the wise men. The gift of a journey. A journey to a baby lying in a manger, but not just any baby. This is Emmanuel, God with us. The star led the Magi on a journey to the Savior of all people. And had it not been for the star, the Magi would have had very little reason to go to Bethlehem. They would have had very little reason to look for a king lying in a manger. But there is the star, and God is active in this story through the star. The star is what calls the Magi to the one who will bring redemption. It's not the Magi that come to Jesus, but God, who comes to the Magi in the form of a star, calling them to something new, something life-changing. I think that we're all on a journey of sorts, and the journey is never easy, and at times it may be difficult. But the journey shapes us, and it makes us who we are, it transforms us. And this journey is in response to one who has called us. The journey is part of the gift. And we do not take this journey alone, we're not wandering around aimlessly, like the Magi. We're led by stars in our life. Sometimes it's difficult to recognize what the stars are. It may not be like a star in the sky, but we have stars in our life. We have people and experiences that shape us, that guide us, that remind us that we are loved and there is grace that call us to something new. 
God is at work in each of our lives through these people and through these experiences. Through these people, through these experiences, God provides a star. And in that star, God calls us to something new. So what are your stars? Where might they be leading you? What parts of your life are the stars most noticeable? I think that us as a congregation, we are on a journey too. So where is our star? Where is God calling our congregation into the world? So today, I urge you to reflect on and look for the stars in your life. Look for the stars in our community. Look for the stars in our congregation. The stars are there, and they are always leading us to the manger where God declares, I am with you. The stars are always leading us to the hills and cities where Jesus taught and preached and healed. And they are always leading to the cross where God died for all of humanity. The stars are always leading to that empty tomb where out of that emptiness, we discover and receive everything, life eternal. The stars are there, so where are they leading you?